Good morning. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel, and a very special welcome to the parishioners of the Troy Network of Churches. As we give praise and thanks to our God in the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin our celebration, let us offer the serenity prayer. It is found in the inside cover of your, missile, of your hymnals, please. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, the sinful world as it is, not as it would have it, trusting that he will make things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever. Amen. Father Pat Rice will lead us in our celebration today. I am Kathy Stefanowitz, and I will minister with Doris Shoemaker as lector. Let us begin our celebration by singing our opening hymn, Gather the People. This is number 766, found in our hymnals. Will the church please rise? Let us begin with our entrance antiphon. See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, but also call to mind our good deeds. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me and to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that may fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may ever be watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, Abram saw three men standing nearby, and when he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, 
Please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bathe your feet and then rest yourselves under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may be refreshing, that you may refresh yourselves and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, very well, do as you said. Abraham hastened to the tent and told Sarah, quick, three measures of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd and picked out a tender choice steer and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk and as well as the steer that had been prepared and set these before the three men. And he waited on them under the tree while they ate. They asked Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? He replied, there in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. On behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister, in accordance with God's stewardship given to me, to bring to completion for you the word of God, 
the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past, but now it has been manifest to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. The Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is a need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise so last night at the four o'clock mass, I got excited about the readings. And I thought about my homily, and I thought, I think it was a little bit too aggressive. And it was very long. <laughs> but as I sat here today and listened to the readings proclaimed, a thought popped into my head, and that's a dangerous thing too. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Just imagine you being in this audience, brothers and sisters. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking is the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church. You understand that you are the church, right? So do you think you're lacking in anything? I mean, we all are, right? We're all not perfect. In our baptisms, we're anointed with oil, priest, prophet, and king. And that's the beginning of our faith journeys, to be those disciples of Christ. Two weekends ago, or three weekends ago now, the message in the gospel was about the sending of the 72 out to preach to the neighboring towns and villages. And then last weekend was the gospel of the Good Samaritan. I understood the gospel about the sending out 
of the two by two to the towns and how they went out to cure the people in the individual towns. The Good Samaritan story always confused me because I didn't understand why the two priests would cross the road and go to the other side. Wasn't that their call to ministry? But that was back in that time and place. And what I learned in seminary was scripture is about time and place. I remember when I was studying, I would call my mom occasionally. And she would say, what are you studying now? And I said, Old Testament history. She said, Old Testament history? How is it? I said, it's really complicated. What I didn't know was that she was going to read it on her own. And so I called her about three weeks later, and I said, Mom, how you doing? She goes, oh, Pat, this Old Testament history is really difficult to read. I said, yeah, Mom, you're not supposed to do that on your own. You need to be with a priest or with somebody that knows scripture so they can explain time and place. And so I then understood that the gospel messages that we hear every Sunday, we have to understand where they come from, how they affect our lives. So I want to share with you today's gospel message. Now, how many of you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but how many of you would be, and this applies to the men too, the Martha and Mary can be replaced with Harry and Joe if you want to. How many of you would be Mary, and how many of you would be Martha? Let's just think about that for a moment. Would you be the busy one, trying to prepare the meal? Or would you be the Mary that sat next to Jesus' feet? And what does it say? She sat beside the Lord at his feet, listening to him speak. How awesome must that have been? Talking to her about his message. The change in the way to live her life. And Martha, busy preparing the meal. I remember when I was growing up, every Sunday, my mom had her parents over for dinner. And it was a big thing. And we were always raised that Sunday was the Sabbath. So I never understood why my mom put all that effort working like crazy on a Sunday, which was supposed to be a day of rest, to feed us at the table with her parents. And then I remember that my, my grandparents used to get there. She'd send us out of the kitchen to go sit with my grandparents. She was telling us to go be the Mary to go understand the message that my grandparents had for us and how to live our lives. And she was the Martha preparing the meal. And so it brings us to our today's scripture. I want to share this with you from a Jesuit priest, Father John Foley. He begins the second story. Now the first story was about Abraham, right? Travelers are going down the road. He doesn't know who they are, but he goes and gets water for them. He prepares the calf for them, and he cooks for them. And who's in the tent doing all that work? Sarah, right? In the gospel, Jesus enters the house of his friends, Mary and Martha. He, too, is welcomed warmly. As he sits, Mary arranges herself at his feet. So imagine that scene. And focuses her clear eyes upon him. While Martha bustles about preparing dinner. Unfair. Martha gets tired and exasperated and finally asks Jesus to make Mary stop lounging and help out a little. Surprisingly, Jesus says, that's a question. Jesus says no, right? Mary has the better part. Martha just can't understand this. Isn't this a response unjust to Martha? After all, someone had to make the meal, but there would be none. How often do we encounter in our busy lives, out working all day, we have a list, we get up in the morning, to the do list. And how often is it to do list to go to the church and spend a few hours with Christ? Or to go to adoration, maybe? Or as I challenged the parishioners last night, next week, Okay, you got a busy week, I'm sure. We all do, right? Pick one day on your calendar and mark it with an X. And on that day, go to daily Mass and see what happens in your lives. After all, she had to make the meal, there would be none. Or maybe Martha could have said, we're not going to have food tonight. You imagine that scene? We are just going to sit and stare at you. 
We laugh at that because it's humorous. But imagine if Martha had switched positions with Mary. What Mary realized in that very moment was, who was she being fed by? Not Martha, by Jesus. By the words that he was providing her with, the words of eternal salvation. In truth, Martha, trouble was not that she was scrabbling about, but that she did not forget about Jesus. She was not making him welcome. She was constructing a meal. He even tells her that she was anxious and worried about many things, but not the one thing that's necessary. How often do we get caught in that same turmoil in our lives? I gotta go to the store, I gotta fix the meal, I gotta pick the kids up, I gotta go to this, I gotta go to that. Did we open the day with prayer? Did we end the day with prayer? The examination of conscience. How many at night lay in bed and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I will try and do better tomorrow. What is the one thing necessary? Our relation to Christ. Real hospitality means a two-way relationship in which the host and the guest are open to each other, become present to one another in various ways. Now, when my mom invited my grandparents, her parents, over for dinner, we all gathered around because it was Sunday and it was to see her parents and her sister Elizabeth. I look back on those days and I learned an awful lot from my grandmother and my grandfather. I didn't realize what my mom's real intention was, to become present in each other's lives. Hosts do work out the details of preparation and they work hard, but they always remember the visitor while they prepare. Excellent hosts manage somehow to get everything ready, but also to truly listen and converse with the one who has come. My Aunt Betty used to leave the fireplace if it was the winter time. We had a family room, and she'd always come into the kitchen, and she'd begin to taste the food that was prepared. She'd take a little nibble on this, and a little nibble on that, and a little nibble on this. I always had vivid memories of her. She was the Mary that would have gotten up and gone to taste the food. But Mary realized the food was Jesus. That is how we are supposed to act every day. We are to find God in all the things we do, in all the people we know or help, no matter how busy we might be. We are to relate to them because God is within them. Each and every one of you, at your baptisms, were anointed with the Holy Spirit. The fire of your faith was ignited. Are there just embers remaining? Or do you stroke that fire every once in a while? You're obviously here today to receive the Eucharist, the nourishment that ignites that fire. So as you leave here today, I might have to look for a fire extinguisher because I'm sure the fire coming from your hearts is going to be loud and bright. We are here to relate to them because God is within us, deep in our souls. Touch him, hear him, prepare meals for them without forgetting them. We will be given hospitality to God himself. Abraham gave it, Mary gave it, and Martha forgot like you and I do sometimes, but she learned. Let us today as we leave Try to learn it, too. God bless.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the corner of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord. 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 As Martha and Mary discovered, the kindness and love of God is revealed in Jesus in our midst. Let us pray to the God who is here, the God who listens. For the church, that we will offer hospitality and understanding to all who enter into our lives and help them become aware of God's presence today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for an openness to the gift of life, that all parents joyfully welcome and care for each child who enters their family and see them in God's promise to, for tomorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all who live a life of service, particularly those who care for the sick and the suffering, and those who assist travelers in need, that they offer their help joyfully and be renewed by God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all couples who wish to become pregnant, that God will hear the desires of their hearts and give them a child to love, nurture, and guide to maturity. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who are suffering, for the sick, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, that God will fill them and give them peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, especially those closest to our hearts. And for Kathleen Bissio, Paul Bissio Jr., Joe Russo, Tony Mazzeo, and John Davis for whom this Mass is offered. May they be welcomed forever at the Lord's banquet in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord and for those special intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever-loving Father, receive our prayers as we rejoice in the mystery of Christ among us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 834, Many and Great.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O oh lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, He himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples. Saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, St. Jude the Apostle, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. be chanting the Our Father this morning. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to chant. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Forgive us our trespasses, as 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you, fathers. The body of body of Christ.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. I just want to take a moment to share with you. Yesterday, a classmate of mine from the seminary had discerned out for family reasons of health. And so six years later, he entered the seminary two years ago. And today, yesterday at um, 11 o'clock in the morning, he was ordained a priest. He went from, from Brother Michael Young to Father Michael Young. He's studying and he is now ordained for the Diocese of Venice, Florida. Could you just share with me, and we could pray a Hail Mary in his honor. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of us gathered here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you to God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn number 812, Take the Word of God with You. <laughs> 